Now you shot a, a little movie called Men in Black, um, which uh, I directed. That. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. You directed a film called Men in Black. Um, it was just a small film um, with yeah. a, a young upstart, um, William something. Um, yeah. but, <laughs> Mr. Um, Smith. Yes, Mr. Smith, Mr. Will, Will Smith. Uh, when you were directing Men in Black, um, what what was it like? Well, that was probably the biggest thing you'd ever directed at that point. I'm assuming the budget was much larger than Adam's family at that point, correct? Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. And then and then you had Will Smith, was, who was fresh off of Independence Day, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Not yet? Oh. It was Men in right. Black first? Uh, Independence came out, Independence came, Day came out first, but Will was shooting the last two weeks of Independence Day when we started shooting Men in Black. So oh. the only movie he had done was called Six Degrees of Separation. Right. right, right. That and, you know, obviously Fresh Prince, and that's how I knew Oh, so, so he wasn't a star, he wasn't a monster star while you were shooting. He was still Fresh Prince of Bel-Air who got the lead in a huge studio movie, basically. That's right. Yeah. And I guess they, I guess they saw him on Independence Day or something. And they said, Hey, they didn't, they had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Did you, did you cast? Yeah. Oh, wow. So here's what happened. Okay. So I get the script and, uh, uh, and I, Sweetie and I read our scripts together. We always, this is before email. So we got sent two copies. Sweetie always gives me a 60 page head start because I'm a slow reader. And we finished the scripts, and I turned to her and I said, Tommy Lee Jones. And she turned to me and said, Will Smith. And I said, Who's Will Smith? And she said, Oh, have you not seen Fresh Prince? And I go, I guess not. She says, You want Will Smith. And you always do what your wife tells you. <laughs> so, uh, so the studio and Spielberg and the producers don't want Tommy or Will. They want Clint Eastwood <laughs> and Chris O'Donnell. Oh, that's right. I heard about that. Yes, that was the original casting, Chris O'Donnell. Right. Yeah, so um, Spielberg says, you know, Chris is in L.A. I want you to come to L.A. and convince Chris to do the movie. He's staying at the Four Seasons Hotel. We'll put you up. So I go out to L.A., stay at the Four Seasons, same place I was when Scott Rudin sent me the script for Adam family. And um, Chris says, look, you know, I read the script. I think the script has potential, but right now it's not very good. And I also have this other project that I'm being offered that has Stallone in it. So mm -hmm. tell me why I should do Men in Black. And I said, first of all, you should definitely do the movie with Stallone. He's really smart. He knows everything about the camera. In fact, Stallone fired me off of Tango and Cash. I heard about I that. So uh, he's really smart. So you should do that. And second of all, in terms of the script of Men in Black, it's not very good. And I don't know how, make, how to make it better. And truth, truthfully, I'm not much of a director. <laughs> so Chris, Chris Pat, I'm shocked. Shock, shockingly. <laughs> shock, shock, I say. So, so Chris Pat, by the way, Chris is a really, really good actor. Yeah. It's just that my wife told me that I wanted Will Smith. So that's the end of that story. So um, I lived year round in East Hampton for 30 years. And uh, Spielberg spent the summers there. And so we were both in the Hamptons. And I knew Will Smith was in Philly at a wedding. And I arranged for a helicopter to come up and fly Will to meet Spielberg. Wow. So Spielberg met Will in East Hampton. Will was very funny and charming. And uh, and uh, they agreed to let me hire Will. In fact, um, Independence Day didn't come out until about two weeks before we wrapped principal photography on um, uh, Men in Black. So I had 18 weeks before... Will was a movie star. He was just a television star. So that was easy for me. The last two weeks when that movie opened, Will became, Will became a movie star. Did, did, did he become a movie star in those last two weeks? I, uh, he, he's always been great. He's always been relaxed and funny and, you know, irreverent. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that must have been amazing. And, and how was it working with, like, was, I know you did some visual effect work in, in Adam's family, but Men in Black was a whole other world. 
Yes and no. Uh, you know, the truth is I was very lucky to have hired Rick Baker to do the, the, mm, uh, the creature design. And Rick taught me, and it's something I, I believe in to this day. Rick taught me that anything you can do with puppets or you, you should. Mm -hmm. And what's, so like all the worm guy scenes in men in black, you know, our, our rod puppets, you know, we built, uh, we always place the worm guys so that we could have rods coming through a wall behind them because then you can ad lib. Then your actors are working with other actors because all puppeteers are funny and charming and are members of SAG and, and they have senses of humor. So you can, I, I, there's a line in the first man in black where, which wasn't written. I threw it into the set, which is, I said to Tommy, Tommy asked the worm guy pouring you coffee if, if 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 it's the same old shit today, and the worm guy goes, "No, Viennese cinnamon," uh, <laughs> which was my favorite kind of coffee when I lived on the Upper West Side was Viennese cinnamon, uh, you know, cinnamon infused in in the beans. So you couldn't do that with visual effects because most visual effects supervisors and designers and animators their strength is not comedy. You know, no, it's, right. and also I got to tell you, I really, really, really don't like the look of most modern visual effects movies. I cannot look at those Marvel movies. They disobey all. They look like video games. Mm -hmm. First of all, they disobey all rules of physics. You can't have Hulk in the foreground on the San Francisco Golden State, uh, the San Francisco Bridge super close up and all of San Francisco in the background also be in focus. As soon as you do that, as soon as you don't play depth of field, the audience knows it's not real. The audience knows they're watching a video game and it just takes you out of the movie. So like even the whole ending when uh, D'Onofrio's spacecraft that he's stolen from the world fair crashes into the ground and comes racing up to Will and Tommy and, mm -hmm. It breaks through the unisphere. Those were all miniatures. They were giant miniatures. They were all 20, 25, 30 feet big. But it was all shot real. Because if that was visual, whenever you go to visual effects, you can put the camera anywhere. You can cheat. You can play with depth of field. And the audience knows it. So, Truthfully, I always thought that Men in Black was a buddy movie with a few visual effects. If yeah. you look at it again, it's very rudimentary. I mean, it's real and, and it looks great, but there's not a lot of VFX in it. Really. I guess you're. I guess you're, I guess you're right. It is a lot of miniature work there. I mean, it started getting a little bit more like in by two and three, there was a little bit more visual effects in it. But the first one, I think, was you're right. It was very uh, more pure in the sense of in, in camera as much as you could. That's right. Whatever you can do in camera, whatever you can do with puppets, uh, even if they're, you know, radio controlled puppets or whatever. The whole Men in Black 3, you know, the whole Cape Canaveral thing and all that, that's all visual effects. I mean, we built a big set, but, you know, it's way enhanced and all that. But the first one was not a big visual effects movie. But I've always been comfortable around visual effects. You know, it's. It's all, you know why? Because visual effects require pre-production. And we talked about this earlier at NYU mm -hmm. when film stock was so expensive. Yeah, yeah. I always, always design shots way early because the worst place to ever make a decision is on a movie set. The worst place is not knowing where you want the camera and you look out the window of the set and the crew is all lying on like, sound blankets and stunt pads or playing frisbee and a day is a couple of hundred thousand dollars a day to shoot and you're wasting time while crews are sleeping yeah that's devastating so visual effects requires the same thing that low budget requires which is everything is pre-planned and there are no surprises I, if I, you know men in black reminds me of like 48 hours with with aliens basically <laughs> you know yeah. in, in a sense in a sense like that because it is the buddy cop movie and they're complete opposites and stuff i, I i'm trying to th i'm just ranking my cranking my brain back and i can't think of a movie like men in black or like the buddy 
action sci-fi. I think it was the kind of the first one to do that. Am I wrong? Uh, I don't know because I'm not a film buff, but you might be right. Um, what's the other one? Midnight Express. No, not Midnight Express. What's the Brolin? Josh. No, no, that's Bro- Midnight. No, that's Midnight Run. But I'm talking about sci-fi. Midnight Run. Yeah. So, oh no. Right, yeah. No, but what I'm saying is Midnight Run is like a 48 Hours in that it's a right. buddy movie. This comedy disguises this big mob thing. And, and in fact, I always felt that Marty, whenever there were those big chase scenes and police cars, it, that it, I didn't want that. I wanted more buddy stuff. So I think Men in Black may have been the first buddy science fiction movie, but I don't, I don't know. I don't want to take credit for it. But I will say it's a buddy movie. And, and oh, no question. Will and Tommy chemistry was fantastic. Yeah, that, that's the thing that people, when directors and filmmakers don't understand, chemistry can save you in so much. Like, when you have good chemistry with actors, it can save bad production value. It can save other things, like, because people are so drawn in by that chemistry. And you could, I mean, well, Will just, just oozes chemistry, you know, like his, 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 his energy. Yeah. But with, mixed with Tommy Lee, who is completely opposite, but they get, it's kind of like the yin and yang just works so beautifully together. It's, it's George Burns and Gracie Allen with Will Smith as Gracie Allen and Tommy Lee Jones as George Burns. And in fact, Tommy on the first movie hated me because he thought he was in a comedy and kept trying to be funny. And I kept <laughs> like, no. explaining to comedy to Tommy that you're going to be funny by doing nothing. You are the audience's point of view. You are the reaction shot. The He's reaction shot yeah. gets more laughs. You're the straight man. And he didn't understand comedy at all. Will loved him. I loved him. Tommy loved Will. I loved Will. We all loved each other, but Tommy really had a problem with me. <laughs> Luckily, he loved Will, so it was okay. And the other problem with Tommy is he's like a little kid. He was always playing with the neuralizer and breaking them. And whenever they had to shoot their guns, because they were space guns, you know, uh, right. and they didn't make any sounds, and right. we didn't have squibs, he would make a sound. So he'd go, <laughs> cut, Tommy, Tommy, don't make the sound of the gun. I didn't. Well, Tommy, yeah, you, you did it again, sir. You made the sound. No, I didn't. Tommy, Will's telling. All right, and we do eight takes where Tommy would, one after another, pew, pew, because pew. he could go like that and not hear a sound, so he would do it. So he was making the gun sound. It's funny. Uh, it was great. It's funny that my short film had the same problems in it that Men in Black did because I had guns and my actors would go pew pew. I'm like, dude, stop that. We can't. You're That's ruining right. the audio. <laughs> right. And we're seeing you make sounds. That was the thing. Pew pew. It was like, you got to stop to the pew pew yeah. or the choo choo. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's amazing.